I've spent a lot of time in my career defending the institution of marriage. And I defend it because it's the bedrock of civilization, so it deserves defending. And I defend it because it's under constant attack, so it needs defending. And one of the most troubling developments in recent years, which we've discussed on this show in the past, is that these attacks are increasingly waged not just from the left, but from certain noisy segments of the right as well. Some right-wing influencers with legions of young, mostly male fans have decided that men should abandon marriage and family life and uh, go their own way. And these, these influencers, many of whom consider themselves a part of the so-called red pill movement, pretend to despise feminists and yet have essentially arrived at the same conclusion as feminists, which is that we should give up on the family. The two sides... Exactly. Feminism and the red pill are sides of the same coin. I keep saying this over and over and over and over, but I don't understand why some people, especially people from the red pill who say, from the red pill movement who say they are against feminism, but in turn, they are doing the same things the feminists stand for. They don't want to get married. They don't want family. They, they are against almost everything. And somehow... They are the, the other side of the feminists. I don't know. Let's continue. Hate marriage almost as much as they hate each other. Now, one of these influencers is a woman named Pearl Davis, who has garnered a relatively large following on YouTube and various social media platforms. Uh, she's in her mid-20s, single and childless, and uh, yet full of opinions about modern marriage and family life, a subject that she has no personal insight into whatsoever. She spent I have had that observation as well because he's talking about pearly things. And the first time I saw this woman, I was like, she doesn't even look like a woman. She doesn't look like a woman. Why is she talking so much about women? She's taking that stance of talking against women for men. She's pandering. She's literally pandering for, for men. I mean, she is hundred percent against women. This is someone who doesn't live her life like a woman because, you know, like he mentioned, she has, she, she, we haven't ever seen any serious relationship that she's been with, with a man. She has never had a kid. She's never been married before, but this woman has made her career all about women, talking about marriage, talking about women, talking about the family, you know, talking about red pill, where is her experience from and where is Pelly things from? Because we've seen this and I always say this. Some people said, no, some, some single people got discernment. Like they are gifted to talk about every topic, but Pelly things, every time I listen to her, she's just going ar around in circles and she doesn't really give something concrete. She's just like, I mean, she has noticed that there is a divide between men and women at in this time and age where most men don't want to be with women because women have now become so entitled and delusional in quotes. So men don't really want to have anything to do with women. They are checking out of dating. They are checking out of marriage as well, because as we can see, marriage doesn't favor men. So the, she is using this to tell the men that no, okay, because marriage doesn't favor you or just walk away from it. Just, just let it be. Just go around, make kids and take care of them and don't be committed to any woman. I mean, if we think about it, these people are standing on the other side. They are claiming that they are conservatives. They are on the right. They are for the right things. They are for for ethics, they are for good values. And is this not contradicting with what they stand for? The past few days on the internet complaining about quote unquote trad cons like myself, who she says promote the nuclear family despite not understanding what it's really like. Yes, we men who actually have wives and children don't know what it's like to be married, but a woman who is not married and has no children does know what it's like. In one of her tweets, she wrote, quote, the trad cons push marriage because they aren't old enough to know better. They don't know the reality of what they're pushing. This is accompanied by a picture of myself, Ben Shapiro, Michael Knowles. We aren't old enough to know better and don't know the reality of what we're pushing. Yet a woman who is younger than us and single does know better and does. 
the audacity of that, the audacity. These are three men who are married. They've got kids. They've been married. They're committed to their family, to their wives. They have lived the life of a married man. They have a nuclear family, something that most people of this generation can't boast of. And a single girl, a single woman, I don't really want to call her a girl because she doesn't look like a girl. And this is a girl who said that she was saying that women are so ugly. That's why men are not going to be committed to them. She even rates women from one to 10. She calls women a 10, a four, a six, a Whatever number she decides to give the woman, she can just wake up one Wednesday and put a picture of a, a lady on her Twitter and say, this is a six. She wants this. Why, why does she want, want this when she isn't even a 10? You know, she's rating women. But when you look at her physically, there's nothing there. I mean, nothing. She's, she isn't even a one. But she has the guts to rate women. And to talk about this, how can you take... Three men, three married men, committed fathers, husbands. I mean, you take them, you talk about them, you try to trash them and say they don't know anything about being married. They, they are not, they, they're so traditional to an extent that they don't want to understand the complications of being married. These are people who are married. They got kids, but you are not married. Pelly thinks it's not married. Pelly thinks has never ever shown us a boyfriend or an ex-boyfriend who is how I, I mean an ex, so we can see that she has an experience. She doesn't even have an experience of dating a guy, but she has the guts to talk down on married men. Marriage. Come on. Understand this reality. Another post she uh, goes on to say that marriage is a terrible deal for men, and she later explains, quote. Would you ever sign a contract that fails 75% of the time where your business partner is paid to break the contract? Why would you encourage men to sign that contract until the terms are fixed? Now, you may be surprised to learn that marriages fail at a rate of 75%. The figure that people like this normally use is 50%. And the claim that 50% of marriages end in divorce is already spurious, and we'll have more on that in a moment, but 75%? I was wondering where that number came from, so I scrolled down and I saw something that she reposted from an alleged lawyer who said this, quote, it's not 50-50, that only accounts for divorces. Another 25% on the negative side for miserable men trapped and cheaper to keep her marriages unwilling to risk financial destruction and loss of their children. 75% chance of a devastatingly bad outcome is just a bad plan. No sane person would enter into a commercial contract on such terms. Now, I did ask him, where he got this 75% figure from, and uh, he wouldn't say. Apparently, the magic statistic fairy came and whispered it in his ear. Now, for her part, Pearl later tweeted a picture of Pierce Brosnan with his uh, wife of 20 years, and she questioned whether the marriage counts as successful since Brosnan wife, Brosnan's wife has put on some weight at the age of 60. So apparently, even if they're happy and have remained married for two decades, they still might fall into that 75% failure rate because they have not both remained in supermodel condition into their 60s. This debate on social media brought out the rest of the marriage skeptical crowd on the right. A bunch of these uh, red pill influencers decided to hop on uh, an emergency Zoom call and spend two hours talking about me and the rest of the Daily Wire crew and our reckless promotion of society's most fundamental institution. Now, there's, there's one clip here that you should see. This is... Um, uh, 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 apparently a, a, divor a divorce lawyer who So, the red pill, according to them, if someone says they've been married for 20 years, like the example that we just saw, and the marriage is successful, they must still be in supermodel conditions, like supermodel shapes, as they were on the first day they got married. I mean... <laughs> This is delusional. I mean, it doesn't even make any sense. And I also see people like Andrew Tate promoting such. And I want to jump in on this. Andrew Tate doesn't have the right to even talk about marriage. This is a man who, who's got single mothers littered everywhere. He's got babies from baby mamas. He doesn't have, he can't boast of a wife. He can't boast of one woman that is his woman that he can present and say, this is my woman. 
And for me, if I want to talk about marriage, if you want to talk about marriage to me, you should be that example. If you are not living an example in your life, I'm not going to listen to you. Sorry. But unfortunately, we see so many men, young men being misled by the red pill community. I mean, men who haven't ever had any relationship, who haven't ever had rejection from a woman are coming to follow these people, Pelly things, Andrew Tate and the rest of the red pill people. And they just start living the lifestyle by the rules and regulations of the red pill community without even trying to do their own experiment by themselves. Go out there, meet the girls, take them out and date them and have a relationship with the girls. Don't sit behind your keyboards and listen to people who have never, ever had a serious relationship, not to talk of a long-term relationship with a man, with like, for instance, with Pelly things with a man. Have you ever seen Pelly things with a man? There was one time I went on, on X Twitter. I went there and I asked Pelly things, where is your own boyfriend? Because in this post, she was talking about how women don't deserve the love from a man and i asked her can you show us your own boyfriend she she didn't reply and then there were other other people in the comment section saying that she's a five she's a six they were using her ratings and saying she was and then she came and said she is more beautiful than like a supermodel she made like a collage and she said she's more beautiful than that woman and i i said you don't even look like a woman so don't try to compare yourself to a woman, to a biological woman. You don't look like a woman. Sorry, you don't. And these, so many people came for me. And I said, when they came for me, I said, how many of you can boast of taking pearly things out for a date? Can you take her for a date? No one replied to that comment. None of them could say, I will take her for a date. Meaning that all these people are just following her because she is pandering for them. They don't really see her like the kind of woman they want to have a relationship with. Another example is Andrew Tate. I mean, he is, I'm a top G, I'm this, I'm an alpha male, I'm blah, 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 blah. But he can't hold a woman down. I mean, a real woman. Has he ever shown us a woman? Like a real damsel, pretty damsel, has he ever? No, he can't show us a real girl. I mean, cheers to all the real men out there because the real men are the men who are taking women out, who are going out on dates, take dating women because we can all sit here and talk about men don't want to date women, men are checking out, the girls don't want to date the men, the men don't. We can sit here and talk forever, but the real deal is out there. Just go out there, talk to a girl, and take the girl out. And the next thing you know, you find out if it's the girl that you want. If you don't want the girl, go to the next one. It's that simple. Don't sit here following people who have never, ever, ever had a serious relationship. You listen to them. Think about it. It says that the failure rate for marriage is not 50%, and it's not 75%. It is, in fact, even higher. Listen. I think marriage can be successful, of course. It's just not something that's as scalable as we as a society are trying to pretend it is. Marriage is, and I've said this a hundred times and I'll say it a hundred more, marriage is like the lottery. You are probably not going to win, okay? You're probably not gonna win. Don't make that your 401k. You're probably <laughs> not gonna win. But if you win, what you win is so great that I don't blame you for buying a ticket and trying. I personally don't buy lottery tickets, but when somebody says, yeah, I played a lottery, hey man, somebody's gotta win. And you know what? As long as you're not blowing money that you need for food or to put shoes on your kid's feet, you're not hurting anybody, go out, give it a try. So I always tell people, listen, marriage, when it works, when you have somebody who's married 20 plus years and they're still crazy about each other, that is the exception, not the rule. But That's when you crazy. do it, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. So why not buy the ticket, take the ride, but have a prenup? Wear a seatbelt, guys. You can be a safe driver, but wear a seatbelt. So a happy marriage, he says, is like winning the lottery. And the thing about the lottery is that almost everybody loses. This is a perfect summation of how this entire club views marriage and the message that they're 
uh, uh, sending to young men in particular. Sure, it can be great, they concede, but only if you're insanely lucky. Everybody else is screwed. This is, this is a rather bleak view of marriage, and thankfully, it's also nonsense. First of all, the claim that marriage isn't scalable is obviously ridiculous because marriage has served as the bedrock of human society since time immemorial. It has already happened at the scale of civilization for thousands of years. Now, the divorce lawyers come along and say that, you know, this thing that, that society has been doing forever, turns out it doesn't work. Unless you're the one. Are the divorce lawyers the problem? Are they the problem? Is the law the problem? Is the law the reason why so, mar so many marriages fail? Are the divorce lawyers the reason why so many marriages fail? Because how can a divorce lawyer describe marriage as a lottery? Because we all know million, a million people can play the lottery and just one person wins. <laughs> what an example. In a million. It's, it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous claim. Now, what about the failure rate of marriages in our culture? We've heard 50%. We've heard 75%. We just heard that they, they fail at a rate similar to the rate that people lose the lottery, which would mean higher than 99%, a lot higher. Um, yet, these kinds of astronomical odds are not based in anything but the doom and gloom speculations of the people inventing them. There is no evidence that having a happy marriage is as unlikely as winning the lottery or that 75% of marriages end in misery. And what about the 50% number? Well, this is at least is a, is a familiar statistic. It's, it's something that you've probably heard before. 50% of marriages end in divorce. Um, it's familiar, but it is bogus. And one way you, th you know that it's bogus is that people have been claiming that 50% of marriages end in divorce since I was a kid. I've been hearing that my whole life. And that would mean that divorce rates are static across time. But of course, that isn't the case. In fact, we know that divorce rates have gone down in recent years. So, so where does the 50% figure come from? Apparently, it's a, it's a holdover from the 1980s, which is when people first started citing that statistic. It's not true today. And it's actually not clear that it was true even in the, in the 80s either. So what is the actual divorce rate? Um, it's a little bit hard to determine. Probably our best guess is based on U.S. Census data, which according to the most recent figures, says that about 35% of American adults who have been married have been divorced. So it's not exactly going to give us a precisely scientific figure of what the divorce rate is, but it's, it's as close as we're going to get, 35%. And 35% is high. I mean, it's way too high. It's not 50%, though, and it's not 75%. And it's not 99%. And it's definitely not lottery odds. Still, isn't it terrifying to think that if you get married, your chance of failure is 35% and the chance of success is only 65% at the most? You know, even if we go with that number, isn't that still very, very scary? Isn't it high enough that it should dissuade anyone from attempting it? The answer to that question is no. And here's why. If the divorce rate is 35%, or even if it's 50%, it does not follow that your own particular marriage has a 35 or 50% chance of failure. Now, I'm not saying that you should be cocky or reckless or that you should see yourself as invincible. I am saying that you shouldn't, on the other extreme, see yourself as passive debris floating helplessly on the tide of statistical likelihoods. Because you are an individual. Your marriage is an individual thing. And its chances of failure are not set by society at large. So here's an example to illustrate what I mean. And this is really, really important to understand because, because as marriage rates fall, and those are falling, um, you know, the, the thing that, that convinces so many people to not marry in the first place are numbers like this. And this, this misconception that, well, look at the divorce rate, and that is my own specific chance of getting divorced. 
And, and I'm here to tell you that that's not how it works. What uh, so I'll come in here. I'll talk about from an African perspective. Marriage for us as Africans is different from marriage for the Western world. And, you know, so many people in the Western world, before they get married, they try to look at the statistics. They try to consult maybe a divorce lawyer. They, they do so much. To, they, they, they get so worked up before they get married, you know. But in Africa, like I always say, we are not just married to the person we're married to. We are marrying a family. Families married, uh, your, the bride's family married the groom's family. You are marrying into your husband's culture. Maybe he's from another tribe and you're from a, another tribe. Cultures come into together. Co cultures unite. Traditions unite. Values unite. Religion unites. I mean, it's some sort of, it's intertwined in such a way that it's so difficult to break. We value marriage so much and we value family, community. Because when you get married, you're not just married to the man. You got support from your community, from your in-laws, from your mother-in-law, from your father-in-law, from your husband's co uh, uh, tribe. I mean, the whole, the entire community. You're not just married to the man. That's why for us Africans, marriage is, is sacred. We don't just play with marriage. We don't just play with numbers talking about how, uh, there's so many divorced, blah, 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 blah. We, we, we like the divorce rate is so low in Africa. Why? Because if there is any issue, any issue props up in marriage, there is always that procedure to go. You need to talk to your, maybe your, your mother-in-law, your mother-in-law talks to the community head. You, it's some sort of a family thing. If it gets to the court, it has gotten to the last stage. I mean, there's nothing they can do. That's why they go to the courts. Of course, some people will say in the cities, in the big cities, and uh, more, it depends on the woman, if she's more educated, if she's more exposed, she will take it to the courts and she will try to protect herself. She will try to protect her property. You know, when property is involved, that's what happens. But in Africa, marriage is sacred. Is so, I mean, we value marriage a lot. So I feel so, I feel like, I don't know how I can put it. When I see people talking so bad about marriage, especially people like Pearly thinks was never been married, talking about marriage, single women talking about marriage. I mean, you can't just talk about marriage when you're not married. You, you haven't got that experience. You, you haven't ever been in a, even in a long-term relationship before being in real marriage. You don't have that experience. You, you, you can't talk about marriage. And what are you doing? You're trying to lead a whole generation away from marriage. You don't want them to get married, uh, married and you're showing them some sort of fake statistics. So it's telling them that 50%, 65%, 70% higher rate of divorce. Maybe in America, like Matt Walsh already said, some of the statistics is from like, Population demographics, like well, the sensor, the survey, from the survey results, the question is that how many of you have been divorced before? So they put the numbers and they use these numbers as the divorce rate, which is contradictory to the real deal because <laughs> the, the, the percentage of divorce doesn't equate the number of people who have been divorced before, does it? So without much talk, guys, what do you think about this? Is the red pill the other side of feminism? Because they have spent all their lives, they spend all the time, they go on podcasts, they sit on, 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 on they create videos, they create content that centers around feminism. Their goal is to fight feminism because they believe that Feminism is the reason why society is deteriorating. Society is falling. But 
they don't take a look at their, at themselves. They should use the same mirror which they use to criticize feminism to look at themselves. And what will they see? They're going to see everything that they're criticizing about feminism reflecting back on them. Because all I see them doing is doing almost the same thing they're, they're criticizing on the other side of feminism. I mean, telling men not to get married, telling men not to, to check out from dating, telling men not to value family. I mean, I don't know. What do you think about this? What's your thoughts on this? Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned. Until next time. Bye.